Well, hi guys and gals. Shane Stevenson, and for today's 28 and tw uh, 29 and 29, we are going down to USS Croker's uh, motor room. As you've probably learned, uh, the Croker and the Kavala are two of the six Gato classes that you can visit that are in their SSK conversions. So these. Uh, these descriptions will not fit the other four that have not been converted. All right, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. Uh, one of the conversions was uh, to remove engine number two. We are in the aft engine room now with engines three and four. Four being on port. And uh, some of the changes then they did to the motor room uh, to make the boat more quiet. So these were the GM Clevelands. All right, everyone, uh, that's kind of how they're known. Uh, 750 RPMs that they would put out. Uh, it's model number 16278A. All right, two stroke, uh, 16 uh, cylinder, and after the conversion, they were scaled down a little bit, again, to make it quieter. So let's get out of the engine room, and we'll head down to the motor room down below. So, if we were to be down here in World War II, what you would have seen are reduction gears. Alright, so the four engines during World War II were attached to high-speed uh, electric generators with reduction gears, and then that would have led to the two shafts, alright, and then out... Uh, to propel the boat. The speeds during World War II, we can go by shaft horsepower. On the uh, surface, on the surface, they would be able to reach about uh, 5,400 shaft horsepower. Down below, when they were submerged, that would be about 2,700, 2,740, and that translates to roughly 21 knots on the surface, 9 knots down below. Um, so let's take a look again. So the reduction gears, I believe, would have been here, and that's the shaft right there. And over here you can see it a little better, there's the shaft there. One of the things that I've talked or I've covered in uh, the 29 and 29 is the converted sonar room, all right? They moved it uh, from the aft of the forward torpedo room down below, and this was one of the other major changes that they wanted to make the boat quieter. And with that BQR4 sonar and all the transducers right on the bow, they could just sit there relatively quietly. Uh, the sonar would not be interrupted by... Uh, the croaker or the boat itself. And so to make it quiet you had to get rid of the reduction gears. They were created this really high-pitched whine. Now I've never heard one um, but talking to people that's what they would say. It produces this high high-pitched whining noise. Maybe very relatively easy to identify. And so what they did was they changed the motor configuration here uh, and they removed the reduction gears 
and they added a low speed high torque electric motor that were coupled to the shafts with the thrust bearings. All right, so if you're wondering, I'm looking at my notes here. All right, a lot of stuff to remember. So, now we have the motors here. And then we walk forward, I'm heading forward actually. Here are the motors that the engines are connected to. Here's the thrust bearing uh, assembly. And then the shaft right there. Motor, thrust bearing assembly, shaft. So for, this slowed the boat down a little bit, right? Because you, uh, you're changing things to make the boat uh, quieter, of course, as we've mentioned. So now, on the surface, you're getting not 5,400 shaft horsepower, you are getting about 3,800 shaft horsepower for a total of about 17 knots. So instead of going 21 knots during World War II, uh, now you are, you're able to get a speed of about 17 knots with 3,800 shaft horsepower. That configuration was brought into service because you're looking at the Pacific in World War II. Long, great distances, got to get there with speed. You want to be able to, in some way, keep up with the fleet. Now, with Russian being a threat, there are submarines in the Pacific still, but a lot of them are positioned in the North Atlantic, the Mediterranean, and so you don't have to worry about uh, getting from point A to point B as quick as you would need, uh, and you're just kind of parking yourselves for the SSKs. Uh, so they compromised and lowered the speed. Uh, so above us is the maneuvering room. I can't see very much. Alright, so I'm going to be doing another video about that because that's part and parcel with this whole system. Uh, so I'll be doing a different video about all the levers that are up there. And that was really the, um, uh, that was where they controlled the flow of electricity and the directions of the engines themselves, whether they're going fore, aft, if they're cut off completely. All right, and so I'll be doing something up top about the maneuvering room. So as I mentioned, there's six gate oak boats left. Uh, the two that would be in the system would be us, the Croker, and possibly the Kavala. Now, I have not established a relationship with anyone at the Kavala. All right, but I would assume it would be like this. Uh, new low-speed, high-torque motors, thrust bearings, out to the shaft. Whereas if you were to go to visit the other ones, say the Silversides, Drum, Cod, Cobia, you would probably see, the re unless it's just been stripped uh, for other purposes, but you would probably see the reduction gears here. Alright, a little quieter, a little slower, park themselves, use that BQR-4 sonar in the bow, and just listen to all the Russian traffic during the Cold War. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, kind of like the underwater sound room, I haven't seen many videos about the motor space on board uh, fleet submarines. So, I wanted to give you guys a look. Unfortunately, it's not energized back here, so you won't be able to see much. All right, but thanks again for all of your support. It's been great communicating with you. Some of you post a uh, comment once a week. Some of you post almost every day. So it's been enjoyable to catch up. And uh, again, leave comments, thoughts. If you have ideas, please feel free to share them, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much, everyone.